Welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson, Psalms. This week we're studying from lesson number eight, which has the title, Wisdom for Righteous Living. And today is Thursday's lesson, which has the title, Blessings of Righteous Living. I really like today's lesson because it has to do with the final recompense and reward of those who live a righteous life. The problem with that here in this life, in this world, is that so many times it seems that those who are wicked, those who do not walk in the path of righteousness, they are the ones who have recompense and they're blessed, at least here in this life. And those people who try to do the best, who live a good life, oftentimes bad things happen to them. And that's the duality that we find here. We've studied this before in this lesson already, where we've talked about how it seems that sometimes bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. So today's lesson is all about the final reward, the final recompense of those who live a godly life. But that doesn't mean that here in this life, there aren't good things that happen as well. You are protected and preserved by wisdom. When we walk on the paths of wisdom, sure, things might happen that aren't the best sometimes, but wisdom does bring on wisdom. You preserve yourself from many things. You keep yourself from many bad instances and situations when you walk on the path of wisdom. So this is what today's lesson is all about. Look at how the lesson begins. Of the many blessings promised to those who revere the Lord, peace is perhaps one of the greatest. Psalm 1 depicts the righteous by a simile of a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. I do want to read to you the verses from this psalm that's mentioned here. It's really three psalms that are mentioned today. It's Psalm 1, Psalm 112, and Psalm 128. I'm going to read Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3, that has to do with this paragraph that we just read. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So you see that there are promises given by God for those who walk the path of righteousness. The lesson continues here in the first paragraph by saying, this simile identifies the source of all blessings, namely abiding in God's presence in his sanctuary and enjoying uninterrupted and loving relationship with God. Unlike the wicked, who are portrayed as chaff, with no stability, place, and future, the righteous are like a fruitful tree with roots, a place near God, and eternal life. So again, the promise for those who remain close to the Lord, it's not that they're not going to have winds or storms, they're not going to be shaken. What the guarantee is, is that while we might go through those things, the Lord will remain close. And by God being close to us, even in the midst of the storm, we can have peace. And that's one of the greatest promises of scripture, the peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that the world cannot understand because peace in the world has to do with environment, with situations. But peace, according to God, has nothing to do with the chaos around us, but who we have with us during the chaos. The lesson then continues by saying, Psalm 128, verse 2 and 3, evokes the blessings of the Messianic kingdom, where sitting under one's own vine and fig tree is a symbol of peace and prosperity. The blessing of peace upon Jerusalem conveys hope in the Messiah, who will end evil and restore peace in the world. Remember that the Old Testament Israelites were looking ahead towards the event of the Messiah. And while they might have gotten a lot of things wrong regarding what he was going to be, who he was going to be, especially when Jesus actually showed up, here in these Old Testament texts, we see that they have a correct understanding, a correct idea of who the Messiah was going to be and what ultimately was going to be the reward for those who believed in his name. The lesson then quotes from an amazing book called The Great Controversy, page 675, that says, In the Bible, the inheritance of the saved is called a country. There, the heavenly shepherd leads his flock to fountains of living water. The tree of life yields its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the service of the nations. There are ever-flowing streams, clear as crystal, and beside them waving trees cast their shadow upon the paths prepared for the ransomed of the Lord. There, the widespread plains swell into hills of beauty, and the mountains of God rear their lofty summits. On those peaceful plains, beside those living streams, God's people, so long pilgrims and wanderers, shall find a home. I don't know about you, but so many times I feel that I don't belong here. 
I feel like an alien in this world, someone that is here that might even be from here, but does not belong to this place. I'm sure that I'm not the only one. The more we draw closer to God, the more we allow him to become a big part of our life. And the more we claim the blessings of righteous living, we will see that we truly don't belong here. When the Bible calls Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, that also identifies and implies that we are his children and that we are God's people that are meant to be with him. It's Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us and God's children with him. The lesson then concludes by saying, the New Testament describes the fulfillment of that hope in Christ's second advent and the creation of a new world. Therefore, while the righteous receive many blessings in this life, the fullness of God's favor awaits them when God's kingdom is fully restored at the end time. Now, some people will find more blessings than others here in this life. Some people will have it easier here, but truly compared to what is to come, when he returns, and when we go back to life as it should be, we will see that even the smallest or greatest blessings here in this life can't even compare to what is to come. My prayer is that you may find that contentment in God, that wherever you may be in life, of course, you should strive and you should be ambitious for what is to come, especially ambitious in the Lord to do the right things, to reach the right people. But also remember that we're called here to look up to raise our heads and celebrate the fact that God has conquered this world and that we do not belong here. Remember to study your lesson. Today's lesson was incredible. I loved studying it. Also, remember to look up the Bible verses, look up the texts. There's so many more that I did not mention here and that complete the picture of what the lesson is saying today. Please remember to comment down below. I love hearing from you. And also remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you in here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.